Hey guys, it's about two years ago, two years and one month, that I did my very first YouTube video. Standing in this same spot with my little handheld camera, snow on the ground, getting ready to show the world my first little greenhouse. We got a little bit of snow last night, and I thought about it, I said this would be a perfect time to have one of them Groundhog Day moments. You know, like deja vu all over again. Then I came around the back side of it, and I said something like, uh, and uh, uh, about 50 times. When you're new, you're kind of nervous. You don't know exactly what to say. Still get in that situation sometimes. But it's January 18th, 2013. Snow on the ground. Still got tomatoes growing inside the greenhouse like crazy. What we're going to do is go inside. I'll show you what's in there. And we'll take a look at some of the projects and uh, talk about what I got coming up. Got a lot of work to do. Inside the greenhouse, you can see... Still got tomatoes coming on, although we're getting close to the end of it. Where I had topped them and then a sucker came out and kind of kept going. I let it grow a little bit at the top so to have enough foliage to finish the growth and get the rest of the tomatoes matured. They are just about ready to be picked off and then I can get these things out of here. I miscalculated how long it would take to get the tomatoes ripened up and went ahead and started some cabbage, brussels sprouts, broccoli and kale and I didn't have anywhere to put it because the tomatoes were still here so went ahead and just put them down either side of this row and pretty soon I'll get the tomato plants out of here and then these green stuff would just keep on going. Over here on the north side where I got this gardenia I brought it in from outside. I didn't do anything outside this year just really didn't want to put on any foliage so we brought it in here in the greenhouse and actually starting to perk up a little bit and behind it I got my loquat tree that a fella gave me about two years ago Still waiting for the first fruit on it. And a few more tomatoes on the other end. This section right here is going to be turned into uh, all the hydroponic beds. The, uh, the floating raft, the cracky stuff, this whole section right here. I'm going to build some different style boxes. Talk to y'all a little bit about that later on, you know, in the future. And just try to get uh, something coordinated here where I got all my hydroponic greens in the same location. My rail setup has been sitting here, biding its time, waiting for me to come back to it. I've got a whole flat there of lettuce, chard, pak choy, just waiting to uh, be put in something. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing set up here in the next day or so, get those plants in there, get it going. And I'll show you in a minute, I'm going to bring the other uh, raft setup I have, bring it in here and finish filling it up with the rest of those plants. I had a couple of extra milk thistle plants, so I just stuck them over here in the small greenhouse, and they've done pretty good. I made the decision to go ahead and top my moringa trees. The spider mites were getting up in them pretty good, and since I was going to be eating the leaves, I didn't want to do a whole lot of spraying, so I went ahead and uh, topped them. I got them down to a manageable height, and then now they're bushing right back out, just like they're supposed to. Got all kinds of carrots growing in here. Won't be long. Should be trying to make some pretty soon. This one looks like a uh, little bitty baby right there. A little bit early. Give them another month or so. Might have some carrots in here. Just from a visual standpoint, this curled mustard is some kind of pretty. Inside the big greenhouse, a lot of work to be done in here. Still got tomatoes going, trying to change out the Dutch buckets. Time to kick it in gear. Here I have four buckets of some beautiful purple basil. And you talk about something that smells good. Man, that stuff is nice. Got some candy onions going on and some red onions in the back. These candies in the front are the oldest ones. They are just about ready to put in the ground. I think I'm going to set them in the small greenhouse here shortly. Got a little bed here filled with some more beets. Some more onions for a little bit later on to be set outside. And some more radish there in the background. I've been pruning a few peppers in here. And I can see all the little shoots coming back already. Going to have a real early crop of peppers this year. Right here is another whole tray of lettuce that I got coming on. These are going to go into the, uh, the new raft setups that I haven't built yet. And I did something a little bit different when I started these. Up under the bottom, I got one of those uh, seed starting mats. A friend of mine up in uh, Boston, Bow Hunter 2439 he sent me a Christmas present. I've always wanted to have one of these things. You know, y'all seen some of the setups I use with the Christmas lights and, you know, whatever. But he sent me one of these heat mats. And you can see I got very consistent growth in all the lettuce. That's pretty cool. I showed y'all the milk thistle that was in the other greenhouse. Those two small ones I had. This is one that I stuck on the end of this long bed of tomatoes right here. And I tell you what, look at this thing. 
she is absolutely huge i put a tape measure on it went five foot across full of thorns and i have broken off a little piece just to see what it tastes like and it's not a bad tasting green but you got to make sure that you get all of those little prickly uh, spines off the side of it because you get just part of one hung up in your throat hard to get that thing out of there got a whole pile of tomatoes right here that i've started from seed several of these are greenhouse varieties supposedly uh, leaf mold resistant so i want to try them out and got some other ones in here too that i, I wanted to try i got a, a variety of brandy wine bred by a guy down in raleigh that's supposed to be a little bit better than a typical brandy wine uh, some Rutgers in there of course and a few other things going on and what I have done this time is I took the really cheap route and instead of using a bunch of four inch cups I just used the red solo cups they are multi-purpose for sure right here I have five more little baby moringa trees got some wild uh, bergamot bergamot however you spell it pronounce it and I got one stevia plant there on the left hand side I started these things a good two maybe three months ago and nothing came up I didn't mess with the pots I just left them alone and one day I looked and there was just one lone little plant coming up so I got me a stevia plant going my two cabbage plants in the cracky setup are doing real good just got them in this tote with my fertilizer solution mixed up in it they're sitting here just uh doing their thing Looking down inside this one, she's already starting to tighten up in there. Never know, might get a head of cabbage out of this deal. Looking inside here at the roots, I tell you, that's a nice looking mass. And you can see this is where it's getting all the water and nutrients from down here. And these little fuzzies up at the top, that's how she's breathing and getting that oxygen. That's a really cool deal. This is the floating side of the raft setup, the one that actually sits down on the water, has the aeration up under it, and I never was able to get the lettuce thinned out, put it somewhere else, so they kind of just grew all over the top of each other. I'll try to do a better job next time of providing room for them to go ahead and head up like they really wanted to. I got a few more greens on this side of it that I need to do something with. I can eat two of these plants at one time. This is the Tatsoid Asian Greens. And what I'm finding out from talking to people is when it comes to greens, uh, a lot of times it's an acquired taste. Some people like it, some people don't. Uh, I happen to like these. I think they're very good. The pak choy is good. I've had some people locally who didn't like pak choy, which I don't understand that. But like I said, it's an acquired taste sometimes. Uh, some people like arugula. I really did not like arugula at all. So what I'm gonna do is clean this up take the whole setup over to the other greenhouse right there at the end of the rail system set this back up get it in place and all those extra plants that i showed you they're going to go in here and what that would do is free up the space so maybe i can get started on the uh, the aquaponic stuff have room to put my um, grow beds right here line them up and also room to get the rest of my tomatoes in here I finally got my IBC tote in here, the one that I'm going to use for a fish tank. It wouldn't fit through any of my doors, so I had to do a little bit of improvising. One of the questions I get asked right much is, uh, how did I seal up the curtains on the outside of the greenhouse? This is a good time to show you because I need to undo this one to get the IBC container in here. This is my northwest corner, and you can see how long my curtains are. They actually extend down far enough for me to come in and put this aluminum channel, just like I had up at the top to secure the plastic on the roof. Put the channel in here, and then uh, run your wiggle wire right across it, and that seals it up for the winter. It's not something that you want to put in and take out over and over and over, but you just, when you finally feel like you're not going to have to uh, raise the curtain up anymore going into the winter, go ahead and drop it down and uh, seal it up. Same thing, wait till the springtime when you're absolutely sure that you're not going to have to drop it back down and seal it up, and then you go ahead and take these things back out. Right now, I need to get them out of here so I can raise this curtain up and try to get one of those IBC containers into the greenhouse. These little pieces of wire, they pop out pretty easy. Not hard at all to deal with. Very easy to put in and just as easy to take back out. You just make sure that you don't end up pinching the plastic and trying to tear it and uh, put holes in it. But these will come out real quick and uh, I'll get this curtain rolled up. Right here I have a whole bunch of big beef suckers that I have rooted. I started them out in the little bitty grow plugs and then I got them in pots now just uh, perlite feeding them 
and as you can see I've got two stems on here I'm going to do everything from the start intentionally do it two stems uh, I have found in the past that when I let the plants go ahead and grow that second stem I almost get twice as much production out of the same plant uh, a lot of studies have been done on that other people I know front porch farm they did a video where they did uh, two suckers or uh, two two separate uh, stems coming up from the same plant you get almost twice as much production from the same plant as you would a single stem and that will allow me to actually cut down on the number of buckets that I really have to have now y'all remember a while back when I had the issue with leaf mold in this greenhouse this uh, brings up a very good point I had a fella uh, inquire about getting some cuttings he wanted some uh, suckers wanted me to mail him some suckers from these plants so he could go ahead and get a crop started while he is waiting for his seed to sprout you know kick in the gear uh, the suckers will get you a much faster production and I responded no any other time I would have said yes but listen very carefully if you have any kind of fungal disease any disease whatsoever on your tomato plants in the environment where they are growing never ever take a cutting or a piece of that plant and send it to somebody else the plant may look perfectly healthy at a time and by the time you get it to them the mold is sitting there beginning to grow on that leaf and you introduce it to all of their plants in their greenhouse in their garden wherever and that's a terrible thing to do to somebody i understand the part about wanting to share and wanting to help people out but you know your garden you know your plants if you've had any issues whatsoever never ever take any part of that plant and send it give it to somebody else to be introduced into their garden as you can see now i'm making progress getting some of these tomatoes out of here they're in the dutch buckets trying to get these things finished up right here where you see i had 21 buckets when i switch over to doing uh two stems for each plant guarantee you know right from the start intentionally some of those plants in there i did end up letting them go to two stems and what it did it just made a crowded mess but what i do is space it out instead of having 21 buckets i'll put 11 buckets in this same space right here and have two stems for each one and accomplish basically the same thing as having 21 single stems this is something we're going to talk about a little bit later on this is my cold frame i broke this out of retirement i used this before i built the greenhouses to get my seeds going outside very easy to do right there's my first head of iceberg lettuce uh, not exactly that's a head of cabbage been growing since back in September finally headed up uh, got it covered with snow now I think it'll keep for a little while I got one more thing I want to share with you out here in this garden growing all by its lonesome was one little seed that came up I planted some turnips out here in uh, September October 2011 made a few not a whole lot didn't think twice about them this year and one little turnip came up I've never been able to grow a turnip much bigger than a golf ball never really had much luck with them I've talked about this in the past no matter how smart I think I am no matter how much more I learn about gardening and growing vegetables I'll never be able to come close to what the master gardener can do Look at the size of that turnip. Look at that thing. Bigger than my hand. Biggest turnip I've ever grown. And uh, actually, y'all know, I didn't grow this. This is what the good Lord can do with just one tiny seed. This thing right here had no input for me whatsoever. Simply amazing. Now that is a really nice turnip. And people ask me from time to time, why are you always giving God credit when you're the one out there doing the work and uh, sweating in the garden and stuff? And it's as simple as this right here. I know beyond any shadow of a doubt that it doesn't matter how hard I work. If he doesn't want that plant to grow, it's not going to grow. And from time to time, like this right here, I get these little reminders of just what he can do. Y'all take care, and Lord willing, I'll see you next time.